All right, so welcome uh, to another video about uh, the open source game that I'm working on uh, and my other open source uh, contributions. Um, so I was thinking about the video that I wanted to do today. Um, and at first I was thinking about doing one in my, uh, the um, game development series, which I haven't started yet, but which I'm planning on starting, uh, which focuses uh, mainly on the game that I'm working on. Uh, and I was thinking about doing uh, a video about uh, about the main loop or the game loop within a within a game engine, uh, which is the loop that con continuously runs and updates the game, the state of the game, and the screen that you're seeing. Um, but while I was thinking about that, um, I was browsing to uh, my pinboard archive, which is uh, which is a, um, a utility that I use to record anything that I can find that is interesting to me in terms of game development, because I'm learning as I go here. Um, and I was thinking I would love, before I start making a video like that, I would like to have a, a page on my website where I uh, I showcase all these uh, resources that I found so I can link to, to that website and uh, help you all um, read interesting blog posts uh, or, or books or whatever, any resource that I can find about a specific topic. Um, and so I use Pinboard for that, which is an awesome um, uh, bookmarking and archiving utility. Um, I've been using it for for years now. Um, uh, and they, and my my pins that I make in this utility are are publicly available, so I could just link to this URL and show you, uh, for example, uh, the game loop related resources that I that I gathered. Uh, but I'd rather have this on on the web in the web page of of uh, Rustic Games, somewhere uh, rustic.game slash resources slash game dash loop or something like that, and have a nice uh, visual overview of of all the resources that I have. Uh, now this page is a static page. It's built uh, from uh, again from an open source uh, project that's available on GitHub. So if we have a look, uh, if we go to Rustic Games. Um, you can see here, uh, I've got a couple of projects that I'm, that I'm working on and I will do recordings on those in the future. Uh, but you can see the rustic.games page here and it uh, it has all the assets that, that are needed to generate the, this website that you're seeing here. And so it's generated using uh, Netlify, uh, so it's automatically uh, compiled basically and then and, and, uh, uh, this page is updated. And so I'd like to add a couple of more pages here uh, going forward, one of them being, or a couple of them being the resource pages. So instead of doing something about the, the, the game loop or the main loop uh, for this recording, I actually want to take a step back and do a, a recording on a utility that I want to write that actually fetches the bookmarks that I have in my Pinboard account regarding a specific topic um, and then processes that into a template uh, to generate a static HTML page. And so the goal, the end goal of this project is to add this generator to the uh, deployment pipeline that I have for the website. And so whenever I deploy the website, it, it would fetch the latest changes to my pinboard archive and regenerate the resource pages and show them on the website. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to do a recording about that. And that's what we're going to do. I also, um, the the first recording that I did, which was more of a test recording, uh, was over two hours long. Um, and and that was even a relatively sh short uh, project or open source contribution that we did to the Alacrity terminal uh, emulator. Uh, you can check it out on, on YouTube uh, on my channel. Um, and so I figured if we're going to do longer projects, I probably want to split them up into several recordings. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to keep this between 30 and 60 minutes. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but I'll try to find a, a natural cutoff point and then we'll do another recording in the future to finish the project. Uh, unless, of course, we, we wrap it up within an hour, but I don't expect to since I'm also still learning a lot about Rust. So we'll have to fumble as we go. Um, so yeah, so let's get going. Uh, so first of all, um, uh, I've been thinking about what uh, how this 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 utility should look, and on a high level, obviously we need to access the Pinboard API. Uh, this is the API that provides us access to um, to the data that Pinboard has stored 
about, in this case, about me, but uh, it will be a utility that anyone can use. Uh, so you provide the utility some kind of um, the API key. So if you go to the settings page, um, you can see, uh, actually, let's see, account page, I think it is. And then, well, let's see. Where can I find my API key? Probably here. Ah, yeah, here we go. So this is the API key that we need to use. And I will change this after recording, obviously. Uh, but for now, we'll use this to uh, to fetch the uh, the data from the Pinboard API. And um, if we look at the left, we see uh, posts. So the, the, the resource that I add to Pinboard are called posts. And basically we want to, if we go to the all um, endpoint, you can see it returns all the bookmark in the user's account. And you can then filter this based on a set of uh, arguments that you provide. And in our case, since we want to get this, exactly this list that is shown here, um, we need to filter by some, some tags that I added to this list, which is basically RKT, RKT, which stands for Rocket, which is Rusty Rockets is the game that I'm working on. It's a working title. Uh, so everything under RKT is, is, the, is the collection that is related to the game I'm working on. And then we have the D colon game dash loop, and the D stands for domain. And then game loop is, is, is the domain that I, that I uh, save these, these resources under. And so this is, so these are tags. And so we want to filter, as you can see here, we can filter by up to three tags. So we're kind of limited by the API that's provided here, but should be fine. Uh, so we want to filter based on these tags. So first we'll filter on the RKT tag, and then we'll filter again on the D con game dash loop uh, tag. Um, so yeah, and then if we, let's see, so um, I think ideally we'd like to have some JSON returned to us. So let's see. Um, well, let's say, well, let's take a step back first and let's quickly, so it will be a utility. So it will be a binary tool uh, that you can execute on your, on your machine. And you provided your API key for Pinboard. Uh, you provide some filtering, so probably a list of tags or something like that. Um, then the uh, the resources are downloaded. Uh, well, actually, and you also I think you will also provide it with um, with the template that you want to use. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then the resource will be downloaded. They will be formatted according to the template that you provided. Uh, and then you're basically done. So it's a relatively small utility, and probably we could have done something like this by combining uh, some some Unix C utilities and piping some stuff. Um, but I'd like to use this as a as a as a project that I'm working on, and uh, I thought it would be cool to do this. So, so yeah. Um, so back to the API. So we will. Uh, I I'd like to have JSON as the return format, and I so XML is the default, but we can also provide as for JSON. Um, so let's quickly see. Right. So we'll we'll have to provide the format argument and set it to JSON as well. So that's fine. Then let's see. So authentication, mm. API authentication tokens. Yeah. So we'll provide a token, and yeah. So this is exactly the token that we have here. So we'll provide. We can provide that here, and then let's see. Rate limiting. Every three seconds, except the following. Okay. So. Since we want to use the post slash all, we do have um, quite a heavy rate limit. One request every five minutes. So yeah, that's less than ideal, of course, but I can understand why they do it. Because obviously if you don't provide a filter, you could get back thousands of, 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 um, of posts. Um, so, right, so yeah, so the, it, it isn't a showstopper. It just means that the utility is a bit le less useful. Although on the CI, I don't expect to deploy changes uh, multiple times uh, within within five minutes. So that should be good. And I think since this one is once every minute, and I think, so let's go back. So we have the all recent, days get 
one or more posts on a single day matching the arguments, right? So we could actually, for testing purposes, we could use maybe suggest, which just, uh, actually not suggest, uh, recent. So with recent, we can also provide a tag and uh, we get back a list. And this one has an API limit, uh, a rate limit of once every minute, which should be good enough for, for our debugging and testing purposes. And then uh, this will be the one that we'll be using in the final uh, implementation. Uh, and obviously we'll also uh, add some, uh, do some mocking for our testing purposes. Um, now, since this is a relatively simple, we, we, we just have to do one call to this API to get the data back. Uh, we're not going to look into any pinboard um, libraries or anything like that. We'll just do a HTTP request. Um, and for that, I would like to use request, uh, which is a fairly simple uh, create. Um, as you can see here, request get, we provide the URL and that's it. Uh, now we do need to do some request building. so since we need to set some um, some arguments in the get request. Um, so we'll get to that. And then I think it also, yeah, so it also supports JSON out of the box. So we can just ask for JSON. And similarly, um, once we get the JSON, we want to make it into a structured uh, or a typed object. And so we'll use say the JSON for that, uh, which allows us to basically to define some structs and then uh, get the data and serialize that data. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And finally, so the last part that I looked into uh, in terms of libraries that we'll use is the Terra crate. And this is a crate that provides uh, Django templating. And so let's see, so they have a website actually. And so yeah, so this is basically, so it isn't really relevant for this, for the library itself other than you provide uh, your template as an as an input argument. Um, it reads that template, and then you have some um, uh, some variables that you can use in this template. And so what I'm thinking is, um, well, let's let's see. So let's do let's do a uh, a request for us. So um, so let's see. So let's go to the post all and. Right, uh, so first of all, let's create a new project. So it will be a binary project. Um, and let's see, naming things, naming things. How are we going to name this? Uh, let's see, is there anything, a pin board is, yeah. A bulletin board. Well, actually, bulletin doesn't sound bad. Yeah, that sounds pretty okay, actually. So let's use bulletin as the name. Um, so we'll have a, a binary called bulletin that will actually uh, provide the functionality that we're going to build. So yeah, that sounds fine. All right. So uh, We're on nightly right now, and I think we're going to go with stable for now. Um, let's see. Uh, default, and then tool chain, so we'll set it to stable. All right, so now we're on stable. So this one should be stable as well, yes. Um, and next up, we'll do we'll we'll do the curl request. So we'll see um, if we can actually get the data back. So we all right. So we settled on built-in. So we're no longer need this. Now this is the request that we need to do. Now let's use the um, let's add double quotes here. And now we're going to use the odd preference that we saw here. So we'll do odd token equals and then the API token here. Now we'll also right away do some 
some filtering so that we don't get a huge list of posts back. Let's see where was this list with data type. So we can provide a tag. Up to two fifty fifty characters may not contain commas or white space. Yeah, so it may not contain a comma because using commas is a way to add multiple tags. So I'm assuming or white space even. So both of those allow you to add multiple tags. So I'm assuming that we can use comma in the query itself to add multiple tags or to request um, a combination of tags. Um, and then finally, oh yeah, so we also need to set the format. So let's do that. So we'll say format is JSON. And then was it tag or was it tags plural? It's tag, all right. And so then here we'll say rocket and the game dash loop. Now let's pipe this through JQ to get a nicer output, um, depending on if it works. All right, so yeah, so this looks good. So we're, we're actually getting data back. So, so what did we get? What did we get back? So we got a we got an array, so a top level array object. which contains objects inside it. And yeah, so we've got the, the link to the, to the page that I bookmarked, uh, the description, which is, I guess it's basically the title of the page. Uh, well, I, you can change it if you want manually. So I guess it's a description and then the extended. Yeah, so we'll, this will be the title and the extended is the description. Then we've got some extra information that we could use to see if there's any changes, but we'll ignore that for now shared and we've got tags all right so i think so this looks good enough um yeah so let's start with this so um let's see so we'll go to cargo and we'll add we'll start with uh, doing the actual request so we need the request crate and it's on version 0912 uh, build see if I get the correct. All right, so that's working. The request crate itself has quite some dependencies. So um, yeah, we could look in the future into maybe using some, some simpler library. We only need to do one get request. So we don't need a lot of other bells and whistles, but let's leave it like it is for now. All right. And obviously we also need, uh, we need to accept input from the command line. And so for that, so I know there is, let's see. So let's go to crates.rs to do some searching. Mm, there's probably some kind of, let's see. CLI. Command line utilities. Oh, command line interface. Let's see. Yeah, so there is clap, which is uh, which is quite a big one. Um, but I've also seen struct opt, which also s seemed pretty nice. Now, uh, duct opt is also something that I've been using that I've used in other programming languages. Uh, but I'm not, not quite sure if I want to use it right now. So let's see. So let's see about a quick example. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I, this is the one I believe, which depends on clap. 
Yeah, exactly. So it depends on clap, but you can actually use a struct to set your, uh, and then some attributes to define your CLI, um, which looks, which I think is pretty nice. So I think we're going with this for now. So let's, yeah. Let's see if we can, can get this to work. So we'll also add a uh, struct up already. And we'll add it to a library. And then let's see. So let's see, let's take this example. And so we don't need a lot of this. Um, let's see. I think we want something like this. So we do want some flags. Uh, so in this case, we want to say um, obviously we need the credentials, so this would be, um, let's see, API token. Let's make it a bit more explicit. So this is the pinboard API token, um, let's use T for token. I believe this is the I believe the comments are actually used for uh, for help our, uh, for help output. So let's let's call this uh, pinboard API token. We'll, uh, we'll delete this for now. And then this we probably want um, right. So this will be the this is the template. Call it Django template for now. Template. All right, so we'll also include this one. Uh, template, and we don't, well, actually, we don't want the VEC here. Let's see if this works. And then finally, we want to, let's just see what happens. Uh, oh. All right. Now, how can we give arguments to run? Do we just, yeah, so we'll do dash dash and then the arguments. Um, so in this case, we'll do a help. Let's see what happens. All right, so we got something back. Uh, I'm guessing it got the name from my git config. We'll look at that later. Uh, basic, uh, good question where basic. Oh, there, it is. this is basic. All right, so this will be um, bulletin, usage bulletin flags template. All right, so this is nice, and uh, we'll clean this up a bit. Uh, and we've got the token in here, pinboard API token. All right, this looks good now. Obviously, this needs to be a uh, a string. And all right, so we've got some inf some some details now that we can use. Uh, we'll hard code the uh, the tags for now, the the pinboard tags, but we'll get back to that later. So we don't need to use clap anymore. This is fine. So let's go back to request. And so let's see. So I, I think they have some examples, like most uh, Rust projects, which is which is an awesome uh, thing that the Rust community does is always add examples to your project. Um, so yeah. So we've got the JSON typed example here. 
and we'll use that one. So as you can see, the, you derive serialize and deserialize uh, from uh, say the uh, derive, and then with say the JSON, you can actually um, go from the struct, get a string as input, which is a JSON string, and then get a struct as output. Right. Uh, well, actually, this one, let's see. This one goes the other way around, I think. Um, so, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where we where we'll end up. So let's see. So we'll we do need to set a JSON. Let's see which version is it. One dot oh dot thirty nine. And then uh, let's get back to, to the example. So we need to, uh, we also need to say the derive. I'm not sure which version this is. Let's just get the latest for now. I'll clean it up later. And now we want to uh, use derive uh, serialize and deserialize now we only need one of the two and I always forget which which is which uh, so uh, it'll clean itself up um, now so we're getting a top level array back so we'll have to see uh, we'll have to figure out how we can go from uh, an array top level array to an actual to an array of structs. Um, so first we need uh, we need to define some values that we get back. So this will be well actually it, it is it is considered to be a post on pinboard. Um, so I guess we can leave this as a post. And so what do we get back from this post? So we've we've got the data here. So each post has a href so let's um, a title yes this is the description um, now this is obviously a um, also string so these are all actually all strings although with tags we might so we'll get it as strings first and we'll later see if we can add some custom uh, deserializer to go f from this string to an actual array of strings uh, or a vector of strings but for now we'll just do the tags as is so we've got the title the description um, and we also so we do need to do some renaming here so this matches but this one is actually called description and this one is called uh, Extended, something like that. Extended, yes. And finally, we have tags, which is also just a string for now, which doesn't need to be renamed. And so the rest, well, time, I guess time would be interesting. Um, again, we'll do a string for now, and later we'll see about getting it into a proper type. All right. So this is the um, can't find crate for Serda. We probably need to include the Serda crate as well. Let's take another look at the let's see Serda Jason. All right, so this, the um, the serialize and deserialize actually come from um, from Seat itself. I guess they are exported there, so it makes sense. So we'll do uh, like this, and then we'll see Seat. I'll have to figure out if we even need Seat to derive here. For now, this is fine. 
cannot find derived micro deserializing the scope. Um, deserialize, serialize. Unused imports. So probably we actually need to, let's see. Let's go to um, as docs. Let's see, do we have an example here? They even have a website, so let's check it out. Right, so we do need to set the version. And then we can remove this one and say the JSON. Yeah, so let's, let's spin it to um, 1.0 and we'll accept any patch versions that they release and we'll do the same for request. All right, so this is working now. Uh, let's see. So these errors should go away. Uh, and next up, we need to um, let's take another look. Right, so we can so we can deserialize. And then probably, probably we can deserialize this to uh, to a vec of post. So let's say we've got post, and this will be a vec of post, and we'll get this from a string. And so let's just for testing purposes, let's add a, uh, a string manually. So let's use this example here. And we'll uh, pass in the data for now. And then um, let's see. So we'll take one, uh, one value in the array and see if that works. So we'll take, oh, let's do two. So we'll take these. And we'll add them here. Finally, we'll close this up. Um, let's see. And we'll do this like this. All right. And let's see. Can we? Mm -mm. Yeah, let's do some printing then. So we'll do print ln. So we'll do the title. So would this actually work? Let's see. Let's first build it. And then we'll do another run. Let's do help. So we do we actually need to provide the template? Is it required? Following required arguments were not provided, right? Okay. So we'll do a token C and we'll say the template is uh, doesn't matter. 
All right, so this looks good. So we're getting the title back, which is nice. Um, and we also printed the uh, the arguments that we gave, which are also correct. So, so far, so good. Um, let's see. So I think we'll... So this is working. So let's go to a request now and let's do, let's, uh, let's, let's add a request to this. So we'll need to figure out how to do a, um, how to build a proper request using the request builder. Build to construct the properties of a request, right? So we can set some headers, which we don't need in this case. Um, but we do need to set some query values. So, so this is a tuple of, I guess, the key and the value. And we can provide multiple tuples in a single query. Um, and since it's a builder, I assume we can also provide query multiple times. Um, right. All right, so this makes sense. So we'll create a new client. No, let's just copy it over. So we'll create a new request client. Now, obviously we still need to import request itself. So let's see. Uh, we'll need requests. Use request for now, and then we we create a new client. Then we do a get request. Now this will be to uh, let's see to this one, um, and so until uh, here, yes. So this is the request endpoint. Again, we can make this configurable in the future, but for now, let's get it to work first. And so here we're going to pass in some, some queries. So first of all, we will set the format uh, to uh, JSON. And we'll do another one, which will be the tag. And then we also need auth token. So let's set auth token first which will be the um, opt dot um, pinboard API token. And then the last one will be tag, which for now will be hard coded to uh, rocket the game loop. All right. Now I saw something about being able to write JSON. So send the JSON, no, that's not what we want. All right, so we'll just, we'll get the value back. Um, and then what does send return? Send returns a response, a result of a response. And so instead of just, we'll factor this out into, into separate um, functions as we go. But for now we'll just get it, we get, uh, rest will be, Let's see, well, let's do a match here. Let's say, um, so we get an okay back, which will be the result, which will return. And if we get a error back, we'll do something like panic error and um, what's happening here where am i passing all right so this is a string yes yeah, so we're not using a uh, rest yet although a response Um, and so instead of this data, we can actually now, 
Well, not quite. We probably will need to go from a response. Let's see. So we've got a response object. And with it, we can get the, the text. We could, we could copy the text into a buffer, but we're not really concerned with performance or anything. And since we're only doing a single request, uh, we're fine. Now I'm, we could check the status as well. Although let's quickly see what is it. This method will fill if there was an error while sending the request, right? Right, so the so this will only fill if the request itself, if sending the request itself fills, not so much if the response from the from the server is a is an error, which makes sense uh, because that's something you would want to define yourself. So then, in the response, we will have to check the status. Now let's check the pinboard API to see if. And uh, I think there was something about errors below, right? The Pinboard API is the best to mimic the behavior of Delicious API. Right, Pinboard bought Delicious a couple of years back, so their APIs are similar because Delicious had a lot of customers already. And so the Pinboard API is designed after the Delicious API. All right, so if something goes wrong, we'll get a... Code, something went wrong, code done. Which is interesting because I can't, if I look at the results that we get here, there is nothing related to code or anything. There's just a top level um, array and some details in there. So I'm wondering what if we, if we do the request again and we'll just, uh, We'll do an invalid token. Let's also change my name and in, in case they suddenly start blocking me. Uh, so if we do this request again, oh, let's remove JQ because so we're getting so we're asking for JSON, but we're not actually getting JSON back. It seems. Let's see what the request. All right, so we do get a, a, a different status code back. So, and I'm assuming uh, if we do it, do it with the correct. Let's pipe this to uh, data.txt. And I'm assuming we did get a Bit all over the place. Where is my response status? So this is a request. This is the response. Content type text plane. Okay, I'm not seeing the status code here. Uh, what is in data.txt now? Yeah, so this is still top level area. All right, so I'm guessing we should just check for 200 status code. And anything else should be considered an error. So if uh, response dot status was it status? Yes. Um, equals now is success. What does a success mean? Is that two hundred or is that anything else? Uh, let's see, status code, success. All right, so anything within the 200 range, which is which is fine. Although I guess, well, redirect is automatically handled by request. So if we get a redirect response and something is wrong. Um, so anything other than a, um, a success, anything other than Success should trigger, for now at least, another panic. Um, let's 
let's see. Status code. And we can, if we do get anything else, we'll return the text, which is another result again. So let's see, why is that the case? This consumes the body, right? That's fine. So we can get the text again. I will just unwrap it for now. All right. Uh, so this is now, this now becomes, um, and we'll unwrap this as well for now. So this text unwrap. Cannot borrow, why is it mutable? All right, well, let's make the response mutable then. All right, so let's see. So now we should get an error back since we're doing a request with an invalid token. Uh, let's see. I would have expected to get something like an error message back. Where are we panicking now? Main 42. Yeah, exactly. Although it's interesting. So I'm guessing did the unwrapping fail or did the panic? Because I'm expecting at least something like a like a response. Uh, let's see. Unless, of course, we don't get any uh, body on a, when there is an error. Which also means that we can change this. To body. Let's try that again. Panic's at 44, and so yeah, so that's this panic. Uh, and I'm guessing this is the, uh, we're actually getting an empty body back right now. Um, yeah. Which is not what I expected. Because if I do this one, like this is the this is the boy that I get back. This is not. It's the same as the header, uh, as the status code. Um, but this is the actual body that I'm getting back. So I'm confused. If I get this to error and say, yeah. So we are getting something back, uh, but somehow we're unable to read it here. So let's just take a look. Get the response text. Yeah, so this is not, we could tr uh, we could actually do this. It says there's a couple of lines, but this is just text that we're getting back now and it's not working the way I expected it to work. We're unwrapping the text, so we do get it, get the text back. If you're trying to read more, we use of JSON, response of JSON will return empty values, right? But we're only using it once, which is right here. So let's see. Let's first check if the if the valid response actually returns uh, something. 
Um, so if we do the same thing, let's. Um, so the token will be this one here, and then the template doesn't matter yet. We're not using it yet. So this should actually work and we should see some output now. All right. So this is actually working. All right. So somehow we're not getting a body back here, which is interesting because curl somehow curl does show me a body. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, is there a difference in curl behavior? Like, no, I'm pretty sure this is the body that we're getting back. It doesn't matter. Um, the other thing is may mm, no, if it's not a success, you wouldn't get a body. No, that can't be the case. You would always get a body back, even if it's not within the 200 range. Uh, we'll figure this out later. Either way, we do have a uh, ever data back, and we we use Sarah JSON. Um, I guess we could. Um, yeah, this is fine. We'll just leave it as it as is. Um, so now we have the title uh, and I think we're going to do some uh, some cleaning up now and then committing our first commit. Um, so what we'll do, we'll leave the output as is for now. Let's see, is there anything we can clean up? Obviously this is not really great. So panicking is not really great. So instead we'll do a, um, let's see, what is the exit? I think it's something like OS exit. isn't working as expected. Why is that? Doc sets. It should work. Let me quickly check. Ah, all right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, standard process exit. Process dot exit. All right. So we can do um, Exit one, and we can do an error error print, um, and we'll just do something like um, request to pinboard API field for unknown reason. Is not working. Is it not? Perhaps it's not included in the um, in the standard preload. No, it's not. All right. So again, uh, we can try this out. So this is at least somewhat better. And we'll do the same for um, for this one, although here we can actually um, Yeah, we'll do the same here. 
and we'll just for now we'll do the exact same as we did here let's see mm. all right so we've done some formatting um we're not using the error we can actually do it here all right uh, anything else we're not using text yet we're not using time yet but we'll do that later um, the rest seems okay And we'll just print out a title for now and leave it at that for now. All right, so that looks good. Let's remove these files. Let's do an initial commit. Well, we're well past the initial commit, I guess. So this will be in a uh, initial uh, well it's not a working version so let's let's stick to initial commit for now all right so this is a, a tiny start uh, I think it's also a good place to uh, to put a cut in the video as I said I would try to do it between half an hour and an hour I think we're just shy of an hour so that's nice um, actually let's remove this one as well and let's just do uh, and, and uh, no edit actually an amend oh, I need to add it first all right so we'll leave it at this I think we have a good start um, so next up in the next video we will be um, we'll be actually adding the templating support so I'll probably do some pre-work and generate some template um, with some HTML and some CSS since that's uh, mostly the boring part. Um, and then we'll, um, we'll output our data into that template. So we still need to, we'll need to change the text to a vector of strings. Uh, for that, we will probably need to figure out the uh, custom uh, serialization or deserialization functions of Serda. So we'll do that um, and then we'll do some cleanup of the responses here um, and then we should yeah, we should be good so that should be uh, probably one more episode and then we'll we'll push everything up and then we'll done so if you like this uh, uh, subscribe to the uh, rustic games channel uh, to be notified of the future episodes and i'll probably do one more of uh, about this uh, utility and then the next one will be uh, in uh, uh, this one is part of the um, uh, open source contribution series and the next one will be the um, um, the next one about this will also be obviously about the open source contribution series and the next one after that will be about the game development series and then we'll do a, a deep dive into the game loop we'll actually start building the game loop um, and which will be actually be the start of of me um, streaming more about the game uh, that i'm working on um, but that's for later for now thank you for watching uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.